All right, today, actually this morning in the wee hours, we're working on the um, the brakes. Uh, one side doesn't work nearly as well as the other. The right side works okay. I did some adjustment on it, and the left side won't go into adjustment. So there's something wrong inside. So let me see if I can demonstrate it to you here. <clears throat> okay. That's about as good as I'm going to do on the light. Okay, so this one goes down and stops about right there. It's probably a little too tight. The adjustment I made, I may have to back it off a little, but it gets tight after about two inches. This one goes, it goes and then it sticks. See that? It's down low, but it goes down way further. <clears throat> so uh, that's the left side. Let's walk over here. Got our moving blanket on the ground to keep the rocks from embedding themselves in my back. Okay. So, there is the outside housing for the left brake. And it's got four bolts, two top, two bottom, and then the whole thing pops off. There's a piece of linkage underneath that comes off, it's just a, a pin and a cutter and a cutter key, so it's no big deal to get them apart. <clears throat> but I need to pull this thing off and uh, see what's wrong with the interior of it. Let me give you a shot of the underside. Okay. So there's the linkage, and that shaft that goes in there is splined, so you can rotate the arm on the splines, and then uh, that sets the uh, kind of the rough adjustment. And then that clevis with the slot in it is what you use for fine adjustment. But there's something wrong. This thing doesn't ever come up tight, so I think something's broken inside. So anyway, I'll take this apart and then uh, I'll show you the insides. All right, here's the, I don't know what the factory calls it, it's just a lever to actuate the brakes. Ugh, it's kind of stiff right now. And this is what connects to it, this clevis and this rod, which you can see is adjustable. So there's a pin in there, cotter pin comes off and gets out of the way. And now I've got the bottom screws out here and one on the other side. So now I'm going to take a, a mallet. This is cast iron and they're very expensive. So I'm going to take a mallet and see if I can break this loose. It's been off once, so I suspect that it's um, um, glued on. Be right back. Okay, so here is the brake drum itself. It's hard to show you what's in there. I'll try to get the light right. Okay. You see there? Now, the problem is, you can see there's oil everywhere. Now there's not supposed to be. This is supposed to be a dry brake system. But I have to do some research on the, uh, on the seal. There's got to be some kind of a seal right in here somewhere. Um, so I'll work on that uh, later on. Right now, let's return to the bench and I'll show you the uh, brake mechanism. All right, now I got this baby in a vise and I got a light on it. So here's the brake actuation. See there? All it is is this lever. All it is is this poorly lit lever, and it moves like that. Now this is backwards, but I di I'm doing this for a reason. I'll show you what I mean. Um, when you move this thing, it opens the pads up and it put in that drags them on the drum, right? It goes either way; it doesn't really matter. But 
what's happening now is I uh, set the adjustment up and I keep going and going and I get no drag I get no brake drag at all so what I'm wondering is is that pin see it comes all the way over and back so now it's flipped 180 from from the factory but it's it's nice it's you know it's it's a symmetrical part and it doesn't seem to have anything worn on it um, I don't really know why it doesn't want to do that and you can see there's oil contamination everywhere now the other side which I haven't taken apart because there's a huge oil high pressure oil line right up against the housing so that's a lot more complicated to get apart than this one. This one's obviously been taken apart before. Um, these are factory. They're riveted. You see the rivets here? Yeah, come on, cameraman. They're, uh, they're riveted pads, and they look fairly thick. They don't look like they're paper thin, and I can see down there with my eye that they're, you know, well above the rivet heads. So, you know, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe this is a very well worn set of pads because I don't know what new looks like um, but I can take this all the way to its maximum travel and get no braking from it nothing so what I'm gonna do is I flipped it 180 I'm gonna see if that helps me um, if it doesn't then this side for sure needs new shoes which are pain in the ass to order from China, or you pay four times as much and order them from the United States. So they're all Chinese made, so it's one of those decisions, you know? So anyway, um, the other side works really well. I adjusted it, and I can actually lock up the tire. So even though it's probably just as oil soaked, in fact, I know it is, um, there's a drain plug right here. Let's show you the outside of it here. Here's the drain plug right here. It's an 8mm bolt. I took them both out and left them out overnight and a lot of goopy old oil dripped out of the housing. So um, they're, they're both sides are wet like this. There's not one side better than the other. Now when I eventually get the other side off it may have a lot more pad material. Because the other, let's see, the right-hand side, um, I get good stopping power. I can, you know, lock it up. So, I don't know. Maybe this one is worn a lot more. I really don't know the answer because I don't know what new pads look like. Um, what I do wish, and I, you know, if anybody knows the answer, please post it. But on older tractors, American tractors, you can buy the shoes, the, the lining themselves, and a rivet kit and rivet the new ones on to the old shoes. You can do that. This you cannot do that. Now, probably part of the reason is the the replacement shoes from the factory are about 13 bucks and like 25 shipping. So, you know, it's not a horrible price to pay, but um, I don't really know if that's what I need or not, and it's a hell of a long wait. I was just trying to get the brakes to work reasonably well for right this minute so I can move the tractor around out of the way in the yard. So, uh, the next step, it might be worth pulling these shoes out and looking at that pin. It's just got two flat sides to it. It's literally nothing. So is the pin worn or is the face of the shoe, let's see if I can show you, see how it's flat right there? Right at the tip of my finger, see how it's dead flat? There's a radius edge in here, and it uh, pushes on that. So I thought, well, maybe that's worn. Maybe the face of this is worn like crazy, but I, I don't see it. It looks flat as a board, and with all the lubrication, <laughs> it's probably okay. So this one, um, to keep the dust out of it, I can't leave the thing off because uh, we live in a windy and dusty area. Um, I'm going to take this thing and I flipped it 180 as you can tell I already flipped it 180 here's factory here's 180 so I'm gonna take it and leave it like that and put it back on um, 
I'm got I'm gonna have to order shoes. That's just the bottom line. So I'll order shoes. It'll take quite a while. And um, the other thing I was thinking about is instead of putting instead of putting a um, bolt back in here, maybe I could put some kind of a hollow fitting and a piece of hose on it to keep dust from getting in, but letting the oil constantly drip out, um, so it could stay drier. It won't stay dry by a mile. And yeah, I could probably wash these out, but I'm not going to change anything um, because the other side is full of oil and it'll, it'll make the tire lock up. So the oil's not, I suppose if this thing really filled up, it would, it would not work as well. But um, the other side locks up. So the oil is kind of a bad plan, but that's just how it is on a Chinese tractor. They don't design everything to great perfection. They do the good enough standards big time. Now, you know, the other thing that could happen here is wonder, do you suppose the, fa the rounded face here or this pin here maybe is worn so the shoes are closer together? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know the answer. Anyway, that's what the inside of these look like. Um, I... I hope these are well worn and that new shoes will cure the problem because it's a bunch of work. Um, the other side has that stupid hydraulic line in the way. It's a hard line and it's going to be a real booger to get apart. Um, all right, that's it for now. See you bye. Well, here's the end result. This one, the left brake, you can see it doesn't come all the way back up. The spring is kind of worn and, and so are the ends of it in the brackets so there's not much tension on it. This one comes all the way back up. This one breaking full is about right there and this one is clear down here in the trash. So and this one I fully adjusted it to give me every bit of throw that I can and uh, there's just no other explanation other than that weak spring caused the brake to drag for a long time and wear prematurely so I've got to get new pads. So got to get them ordered they come from a long ways away and uh, that's what we got to do but at least we learned something today all right more later see you bye here we are in the tractor and an update a very important one um, here's the shifter so you kind of know where we are um, basically under the front edge of the seat there's this uh, clevis and a, and a rod and stuff and what happens is this is tied to the uh, clutch pedal. See it move? See this rod right here rotates? Now <clears throat> that's called an interlock. <clears throat> Excuse me, a lot of tractors don't have that. This one's a 2004 and they have it. What it does is you can't shift gears unless the clutch is pushed in. The interlock here has some ball bearings in it and it keeps the uh, the rods from moving in and out that the shifter moves. So like right now I'm not pushing it on the clutch. I can't there's no way to get the uh, into any gear. So you push the see there? <clears throat> it's not perfect, but it sure works. I just figured it out um, a couple days ago, and the <clears throat> the bell crank underneath here had fallen apart. It's down underneath the the footboard here. It had fallen apart, and so this thing was it was impossible to get into any gear or change, like from first to reverse, which you do a lot. It was a real pain in the butt. So the thing I recommend is you make sure that Underneath this floorboard, the linkage is is correct, uh, correctly assembled. Make sure that the um, the bolts are tight. Um, these Chinese tractors, man, this thing at least for me has had, I don't know what I'm up to now, two dozen, two and a half dozen loose bolts. Just found another one this morning. So it's it's a, it's real, and you got to make sure you stay on top of it. But anyway, you know, I do think about maybe. Removing this and the bearing, the ball bearings and the spring, it's just a little ball and spring. And there's a detent in the shift rods. There's four shift rods 
because this is a four speed with reverse. <clears throat> this is what they call the, I don't know, the granny setup or something like that where um, you've got a, a, a lever here and another lever here. So this is a gearbox reduction, this is a rear end reduction. So you can get this thing to go so slow you could pull a house off the foundation, but I don't usually need that. Um, but anyway, this detent is not in much documentation for the last few years. They probably got rid of it, and I don't blame them. It's, it's, I don't know if I'm going to keep it. So far, like this morning, I did a bunch of test work, and it, um, it worked fine. Um, here's the major clue. Now, you see it's pointing up pretty steeply, and that would be out of bounds so the thing won't shift. So let me make sure I show you where it does shift. So this is, this is about horizontal, right there. So from horizontal to down about 30 degrees is the sweet spot. So this thing can shift gears really nicely. If it's below that, or above horizontal, it will not shift gears. This thing has just been impossible for all the months that I've owned it until I figured out, you look underneath and the thing had fallen completely apart. I'm lucky I didn't lose the parts <coughs> driving around the area on the ground. So, anyway, so that is uh, what I discovered and I'm very happy to have figured it out. I still may rip all that out. It just depends. It just depends on how it behaves. Not being able to shift gears quickly is a serious pain in the butt. These are not synchronized transmissions. So, but what I can do is if I'm in, you know, if I'm in first gear and I'm rolling, I can shift into second and into third and into fourth. So, <clears throat> it's not synchronized. You kind of got to let it hesitate a second when you push the clutch in, but I've done it several times. So that's kind of cool. Um, anyway, so if you have this on your tractor, um, you'll see it very rarely mentioned in the manuals, and it's called interlock. And, um, man, what a pain in the butt to... I, I had to figure it out by myself. There's nothing online, um, and the manuals don't have squat about it. And so the adjustment, it's not as good as it should be. Um, this clevis, for instance, is way at the end of the rod here, the, of that push rod, and there's another clevis adjustment that's also at very near the end. So I don't think that is by design, but that's what I, how I got it to work. So um, the other thing that I've learned recently that's really a big deal is make sure that your pedals come all the way back up to the top of the travel. travel. See, touch it, comes right back up. Touch it, comes right back up. Now, <clears throat> the left pedal the return spring has a lot more work to do than the right pedal. And the reason is there's a shaft um, for the left pedal that goes across the bottom of the tractor to the other side to activate the, the left brake. And so it has um, several bearings, uh, more like bushings, and you have to uh, add grease to them. And I've done all that, but the spring is everything. So I added a spring. You can see next to my foot there's a a bolt head right here and I rigged a short heavy-duty spring from there to the linkage to pull that pedal back up. Now the whole reason for this is the right brake um, just needed a little adjustment and it'll lock the tire right up so that means it's it's functional. The left brake no matter how you adjust it if you remove the little arm from the splines on the on the brake housing down there and any way you want to do this, it will, this will not um, engage. The brake pads will not touch the drum, no matter what. <clears throat> There's no adjustment you can do, it's just literally worn out. And I think what happened is this pedal, the left one, has been um, sagging down because the spring isn't strong enough to overcome all the drag in the linkage as this thing ages. And so it wore the pads down. So I ordered a set of pads. When they when you buy them here in the United States, they're you know sixty five dollars plus or minus. 
So when I get those, I'll put those on and that should take care of the left side. Right now I have just one brake, but because I'm just running up and down you know, my neighborhood street on the dirt, it's no big deal. But you do want two brakes, especially if you're carrying you know, buckets full of gravel or whatever. So um, make sure those two pedals and your clutch pedal all return all the way to the top of their travel with relative ease. You don't want it being stiff. If you have to rig it with an additional spring or whatever, do it. This is hugely important because it's expensive to replace this stuff. It should last a lot longer than it has on this tractor. Um, we only have 287 hours, but it's um, 16 years old. So anyway, those are the couple things that I've uncovered that are um, really important to this thing's operation. Now, you see that plastics bag uh, material I put in place of the boot. The boot was worn out. So I took the shifter, the, I took this plate out with the four bolts, took the shifter out, cleaned everything in there really well, and then used molly grease to, to grease the ball in the socket. And that helped a little bit. Um, it's a maintenance item that should be done every couple of years, I'm imagining. But then um, I've got another, with the pads coming, I've got a boot coming for that. So I put a, a real boot on there to keep the weather out. But um, lubricating it helped a tiny bit, but getting this stupid detent thing to function was 99% was of the battle. So now the thing shifts really well. Um, was there any other great things I need to do? No, I think that's it for now. I'm a rambling a little bit, but um, this took this took quite a while to figure this out. I'm shooting this from above, so you can't see the angle um, of this very well, but it's attached to the brake pedal, and it has to be about horizontal or lower, and then you can shift. Well, I can even show you. I can shift. See, I can shift. If I let off, you can't shift out of gear or into gear. So it's a big deal to get this right. <clears throat> um, all right, anyway, and I've got plans to fix the uh, the gauges and the needles. I wanted to get the thing driving right, so this is uh, Thursday, parts arriving on Saturday, theoretically, uh, the brake parts, and I will put the brakes on, and then the very next thing I think will be these gauges to see if I can put some needles um, on those hubs or put needles from another gauge cluster on there so I can use this. Anyway, so the old tractor did quite a bit of work this morning. Um, the most work since I've owned it, but now it's very functional. Um, it shifts great and uh, the pedals are returning because of all the things I just mentioned. Um, use your grease cirques religiously, grease them especially on linkages. Every, everything's important. If, if it has a grease zerk on it, it's important. So anyway, I'm rambling. Got to roll. Talk to you later. See you. Bye.